and welcome everybody to Broken Ring Racing League, the GT3 Sprint Championship. This is Season 11, Round 1, here at the Indianapolis Road Course. We got a packed house. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very tight racing. Qualifying for over 50 drivers on the grid. It's actually 56 drivers that are on the grid right now. With 56 drivers in open quality, is going to be very tough. Uh, as it stands, if we're looking at the results, Landon Loy, who's in uh, the pit lane right now, let's we'll go over someone who's also in the pit lane. Uh, Cody McGillian uh, in P4, new addition to the uh, the league, you can tell. Um, one of the things they've noticed, uh, oh, he's got the uh, sim motion. Uh, and you can tell that we have a change in sponsor. Uh, Simotion is sponsoring the league itself. And um, it's great to have them on board. I'm I'm not entirely sure what the uh, the rewards are there. But um, it's great that the, you know, Broker Ring Racing League has a sponsor to go along with this uh, series. Uh, almost a full grid. It said 56. Four drivers shy of a full grid. Round one. Uh, last season we had a full, we had a f over capacity on round one, but it s sort of planned itself out a little bit there uh, throughout the the runnings. As he is going to end up stopping there with uh, three minutes and fifty five seconds left on practice. All I wanted to say here is Landon Lloyd leads us with a one twenty four point zero zero zero. You saw that correctly on the uh, the. Uh, leaderboard there and um down to p 26 is the last driver in the 124s of eric koonsman rafael santos with a 125 here he is rafael santos with a 125.1 or 015 is his uh, best lap that puts him at the top of the drivers are now in the 125s. If we scroll all the way down to the one, the P44 of Garen Hahn, of the old Gucci Gare Bears, uh, Garen Hahn and Gareth Ham, teammates there. Not sure if they're both in the. Uh... Oh, they're not. So uh, Garen is in the uh, Corvette, and Gareth Ham is. His teammate is uh, shortly behind P44 and P49 for those two drivers in practice so far. Geared Hand leads us out there on the 144, uh, the 125s, and then goes to Kyle Howe. And from Kyle Howe and 145, he's in the pit lane down to the rest of the grid, which six, five drivers have not set a time on the board. Um, but the others are in the 126s, a few in the 127s. So, very close racing that we're going to have for Freya here. And it's going to be it's going to be anyone's gamble here um on who's going to get us to P1. Peter Flanner was the fastest for a while, then John Carlo Mane Schliemann overtook him on a, a qualifying lap that he was doing in practice. Um and we even have Jordan Groves here, who's a, a very quick driver uh, for Pax Oceani Purple. Not Pax Oceani Purple anymore. But we do have John Javecki out there, and Christopher Daniels also here. They're the Pax Oceani Racing Nomads. While they are purple, uh, their team name is the Racing Nomads. Let's go around. And the Origami, uh, the Pax Oceani Origami Pirates of Eric Neville and Alex Othan. I don't even believe that uh, Eric Neville is here in the pit lane, but is Alex Othan here? I don't see him on the board. But does it make it, make it different though? Maybe he is. I know she can't see it at the moment. We only have 15 drivers or 15 teams on the grid so far. Um, but it looks like a few drivers are trying to make up, uh, make some teams. So we'll see when it comes to round two how many more drivers are are going to team up. 
And with that new, um, a new sponsor of Sin Motion, as Christopher Daniel goes to uh, P6 there with his uh, with his time, you'll start to notice all of these drivers. Uh, if we go over, there's these drivers that are sporting the livery. That is going to be a requirement. And penalty points will be applied for people that aren't sporting the uh, the correct sponsorship for this, not only league, or not only for the GT3, but also in general. I think it's going to be a, they're sporting the entirety of Broken Ring Racing League. Is that we're looking at little lug nuts of Chris Chitterling and Charles Whedon, his teammate. And we are about to go into qualifying because it's switching over. I believe this is going to be about track placement. Where do you come out at? And it looks like John Car John Carlo Minetti Schliemann is first. He'll take us to a, a hot lap, but. It's going to be a lot of drivers, even if everyone is exiting the pit lane right now. As I'm just looking back here, that is just car after car, after car, after car, after car. And look at the pit lane. That is just still a gaggle of cars that have not left. There goes the Gucci gang, uh, the, the old Gucci Gear Bear. One of them, you can see that little Gucci logo there for him. Still, we have a driver that's about to round the final couple corners. And we have drivers that have still not left the pit lane. There's one that jumped back right into his box. At the end there is one of the uh, uh, Caffeine Global More Sports of Craig Carroll and Steve McAllister in that blue Porsche. And maybe we'll see in just a few seconds that we have a driver that's still going trying to exit the pit lane the final driver and there goes john carlo Mane schliemann what is this going to look like for his chances here he's barreling down to turn one he's got a driver that is exiting turn six on the straight he should be fine but i don't think everyone's going to be fine i think we're going to see ourselves have some some traffic occur. And Giancarlo is quick. He showed him practice. He was P2. Can he put it on pole? He's got Peter Flanner, Landon Loy, uh, JD Daniel, John Javecki, Christopher Daniel. He's got Pax Oceani drivers to contend with. He's got other drivers that are also pretty quick. Elliot Burton, Trey Mistak. I don't even know if Trey's here. I believe he's here. He is here, but he is not on track. And also, not to mention, uh, forget to mention. It's there he goes, about to cross the line. He will take P1 provisionally, but can he hold on to it? He's That's a 124.389. It's going to be very good. Peter Flanner, what can he do? He goes to P2 with his time. Jeff Lubitsch is in P3, was knocked down fourth. We're going to see some timing charts changes here in just a second. I'm going to go over to Cody McGillian, new driver in the league. He crosses the line. And he takes P2 with a 124.4. Fastest driver had a 24.000. Mark Foley to P4. Demarcus Rogers, newcomer here in the Brooklyn Ring Racing League. He is in P5. Elliot Burton in 6. Uh, Jordan Groves in 7. Brandon Renfro in 8. Rafael Santos pop takes 8. That's a time off the board for him. Jacob Simmons. Coming back from a bachelor party. And he is... All spent, but, you know, I told him he should do this for Venus. 
uh, book for the Bush's Baked Penis, there's their team name this go around. That's Jacob Simmons and his teammate side by side, and he's going to let a couple of drivers go by, probably build himself a little bit of a gap for when he runs his next. And that's a very smart thing to do. He's a fast driver. He won the Season 10 GT3 Drivers' Championship. So he's got that to look at. John Carlo Manetti Schliemann just takes P1 away. Also, Peter Flanner does. And there it goes. Now we have drivers that are going faster. JD Daniel crosses the line to take P3. But what can Elliot Burton do? He was faster in, uh, in practice with his respective time being a 124.8 right now on the board. Marcus Rogers goes to P7. What can he put on the board? And he crosses the line, and it looks like he goes faster. He does go faster. He goes about two tenths faster. He goes to P5 with that one, but Rafael Santos responds, and he the pink Porsche goes to P5 with that move. As further down the board, we have people uh, contending for positions here. And you know what? I'll just put this tracker overhead so you can see the different drivers and where they're ending up right now. It's a little quick. And that's the interval between them at the top header, uh, the horizontal standings. That means that's how close they are to each other's times, respectively, from uh, left to right on the driver to their left. And this is that traffic I was talking about. We have now just, ooh, a driver that spun off there. And look at that, Rafael uh, Santos. Can he improve? If it's even three tenths, it's going to put him in a w way stronger position than he is in P6 right here. Tyler Anderson goes to P9, overtaking a few drivers. And what does that happen? What does that say for uh, Rafael Santos? We have three minutes, 22 seconds remaining. He's going to call it quits. He does not improve on his time right there. And take a look and see where Mark Foley, who's P8 at the moment. It looks like he's a little bit quicker on this lap. And he's got uh, Alex Warkris and that yellow uh, Ford Mustang. And another driver getting out of the way of Ken uh, Poulin. This is a stronger lap for Mark Foley. It's holding P8 at the moment. He's got enough time to run again. And it looks like he is. But he's got a driver ahead of him. The difference being is you got Alex Warquist who's, ooh, who actually goes off. He's sitting P. Uh, 39 at different pace in quality could really uh, affect a driver especially one like uh, Mark Foley who's just shy of going for his best right now he's about on pace for his last lap and can he cut something out of that that's what we're really looking for Peter Flanner another driver who's sitting in P1 at the moment with one of the faster laps, uh, even in uh, even in practice, would this would be in the top five? Because we know that Landon Loy made the um, 124.000, and John Carlo Manetti Schliemann is just 0 .04 away from Peter Flanner's time. So he's really got to put in something here that's going to really cement his timing on the board. Further back, we have Landon Loy, who looks like he's about a second faster on this lap. But we'll see. Nathan Graham goes to P8. Getting in the top 15, Christopher Daniel just dethrones Nathan Graham for that position. He goes to P8. Peter Flanner looks to be three tenths faster. Michael uh, Cody Iliwan just goes to P4. Mark Foley stays P8. I don't know why that flickered on my board here. Is this a fast lap? 
for Peter Flanner. Can he hold out even a stronger lead on P1 as he's going to cross the line? I think he's going to be done here, and I think he is done. If he went faster, we won't see in just a second. We will. Uh, it looks like his last lap, it doesn't update. So we won't know. Jacob Simmons goes to P6 with his time. JD Daniel is P5. Does he improve? Yes, he does. He goes to P3 with his time. Another driver is uh, Landon Loy, who looks like he's going to continue for one last lap. Giancarlo Minetti Schliemann, he is continuing. Christopher Schilling goes to P8. Elliot Burton to P10. Eric Neville in P9. So we got one, two, three drivers from the Pax Oceani that are in, in the top 10 right now at the moment. With Christopher Daniel just outside in P12. Nathan Graham goes to P7 with his time with 124.4. Gets pulled down a little bit. Christopher Daniel, outside of the top 10, puts it in the top 10. Is this Giancarlo Minetti Schliemann's position right here? Can he take P1? He crosses the line, and I don't know if it changed much. Uh, it didn't. The update takes a little bit of time, about 10 seconds or so, and he has not improved on his time, but has landed in Lloyd. He needs to find three tenths here. Does he have it on this lap? Behind him is Jacob Simmons in P7. Can he find something? Jacob Simmons goes to P3. Landon Lloyd drops down to P6 with that. Jacob Simmons improving, but that's it. And... Jordan Groves finishes in P14. Mark Foley down to P13. Elliot Burton crosses the line. Does he improve upon his time? He is P12 at the moment. And this puts him into P9, into the top 10. And I don't know if Landon Loy... Oh, no, he's, he's pulling up. He's... He is done. That is qualifying, folks. As you can see from P1 to P15, we know who those drivers are. I'm going to start the grid further back uh, with P16 and Brandon Renfro. Uh, Jeff Coffold in P17. Austin McGill in 18. Larry Anderson in 19. Demarcus Rogers in 20. Eddie A. Smith in 21. Cooper McCoy in 22. Chris Lambert 23. Eric Koonsman 24. Uh, Ryan Bird, 25, Chris Stewart in 26, Andrew Korstecki in 27, John Javecki in 28, Rodrigo Theory in 29, Justin Scott in 30, Michael Kostek in 31, Trevor Bonesteel in 32, new driver to uh, Broken Ring Racing League, welcome, Eric Rodriguez in 33, uh, Michael Nash in 34, I also think it's new, so welcome, Blake Nave, 35, Craig Carroll, 36, Dylan Maroney, 37, Michael Shins in 38, Alex Warkris in 39 welcome to broken Ring racing league tyler uh kern in 40 charles reed in 41 kyle howe 42 tyler uh, terry burks in 43 welcome to the league joseph kennedy 34 also i think welcome to the league uh steve McAllister, garen han siri uh, in 45 garen han in 46 blake patterson 47 uh dakota M uh, Moniz in 48 uh jeff lubich in uh, 49 kirk mossy in 50 Blake Robson in 51, Ken Poulin in 52, Trey Masek 54, where's 53? Uh, I guess that's 53, Noah Hoskins in 54, Gareth Hammond 55, and Thomas Matchin in 30, 57. Welcome Blake and Thomas to the league. I think, I think Ken's been here before. And we are about to go racing. And there's Jacob Simmons sitting in on the uh, second row there. The uh, Season 10 Drivers' Champion next to J.D. Daniel and Pax Oceani uh, backpack.
Rafael Santos sporting that uh, that livery again, as per usual. We've seen it before in a couple seasons prior. As well as I think last season, going through some of these drivers as we wait for the gridding to happen. Seeing what kind of liveries some people have brought to the table. And you can see the sim mo uh, motion, the sponsor for uh, Rocker Ring Racing League. Uh, it will be a mandatory thing to see that on all the drivers' liveries. Uh, come second race, it'll going to be penalty points applied. And they started on the back stretch. Have to contend with a few corners here before we get to uh, the start of this race. I think that was 33 laps in this race. Mandatory pit stop for fuel. And this is round one here at the Indianapolis Road Course. Looking at Giancarlo Minetti Schliemann, who is in that purple, red, and white livery. Peter Flanner takes us to green in the uh, Draft Punk Racing Gold. They have a sister team of Draft Punk Racing Silver of Rodrigo Theory and Dylan Maroney. As we go, that is green, and it looks like Giancarlo Minetti Schliemann has the run. No, he doesn't. That was just a play on the, uh, the old camera there. Peter Flanner already well ahead in P1. But Giancarlo is going to have to worry about what's happening behind him. He's got Jacob Simmons. So it's J.D. Daniel on the inside there. Who's going to hold that together? And then even further back. So Jacob Simmons stays ahead. And there's Nathan Graham. One posi two positions gained. Landon Loy also gaining position there. And they're scrapping right there. And look at that. Landon Loy up one position in that uh, Martini livery and had it with the Lamborghini Huracan. He's ahead. Chris, Nathan Graham sticks ahead of Christopher Daniel and Elliot uh, and uh, Cody Iliawan. And he's going to stay ahead. Elliot Byrne up one position. Christopher Daniel down two positions. The rest of the field follows suit with only a few drivers losing out here so far. And there's just a snake now. And when our pass is gonna happen, it may not even happen, but opening lap like that, you're gonna see it just a little bit. And there's Austin McGill going toe to toe with Joshua Grasso, who's up four positions. Joshua Grasso is P15, Austin McGill in 14. And this looks like a great start for Austin McGill. And it looks like Joshua Grasso is going to try to make a move, but he's going to go to the racing line and defensive maneuver for Austin McGill. Ooh, and he's really on that curbing. And you know what? There goes through Joshua Grasso, who takes P14 and has the inside line. And he's going to keep it. Now he's got to worry about Jordan Groves, who's sitting there right back there in the Pax Oceani purple. And even further up, we have Rafael Santos and Mark Foley who are battling side by side. Doesn't look like it, but that is four position. Rafael Santos down one. Chris Chitterling is up. And he is that uh, Ford Mustang ahead in the white and black. Mark Foley up one spot. And I think it's going to go to Eric Neville who gets ahead of Mark Foley. And that's the Pax Oceani Origami Pirates. His driver, who I don't think his teammate is here, of Alex uh, Othen. And now it looks like Mark Foley is under pressure from Joshua Grasso. With P1 through P4 have not changed positions. Giancarlo Mene Schliemann going faster on this lap. And it is just 
a laundry list of drivers back there as you can see them further and further back. And it's just intense with so many drivers so close together on lap three. Not even sure if we've seen any accidents just yet. Cooper McCoy in P29 has John Javecki to contend with. Cooper McCoy down seven positions. He must have had some type of uh, run-in. Don't see anything on his car, but losing seven is not normal. He must have had some type of mistake happen. That looks like Justin Scott's going to go down to the inside and try to make that eight, but not just yet. As just ahead, you have Eric Koonsman, Rodrigo Theory also battling it out there. Rodrigo Theory is the Draft Punk Silver driver there in the background. Uh, and look how impressive this is. 56 drivers on the grid. And things are happening ahead. That's Brandon Renfro. It's actually easier to look at drivers in this perspective. See more things are happening. We're on board with Brandon Renfro. But it is actually Jordan Groves. And Austin McGill that are battling out. And that's Joshua Grasso going three wide into turn one. And that's going to turn into two wide. Joshua Grasso's got that inside line for the next corner. But it's going to go back to Jordan Groves. And look at that. Austin McGill tries to make a move. And I think he has it down on Joshua Grasso. He's now side by side with him. Austin McGill has to give it up slightly. Going through the next couple of corners, he didn't have the inside line, and he's now going to have to worry about Brandon Renfro, that Black Jack, Black Daniels Porsche. And look at that. A move from Tyler Anderson. Sends it down the inside line on him, and he makes it stick. And through he goes. Eddie A. Smith now looking to be a contender. The Ford Mustang BOP did not hit. Well, the overall uh, six-hour BOP did not hit. Uh, here we go. Cooper McCoy, Justin Scott. Someone's tumbling down the order right now. Oh, uh, it's Michael Kostak. Ooh, he is just a victim. As we can see, he's coming to the corner. He's P55 right now. At the moment he is, but previously he wasn't. He just gets involved in that melee, and there's nothing he can do. He's sitting sideways on the track like that is not his fault. Good on him for backing out of that. Unfortunate for that driver. Garen Hahn of the Gucci Gare Bears is uh, having to battle it out with Dakota uh, Moniz. And he stays ahead. He's up two positions at the start of this race. Trey Mistak, also another driver up ten positions off the start of this race. And that uh, McLaren, he's got Steve McAllister just ahead of him. Ooh. No. Austin McGill. Take a look at this. He's got Tyler Anderson behind him. There's a, a move on the inside line, and yeah, no, no bueno there. Eddie A. Smith is into the pit lane. Not sure why he's doing that. Maybe he's got some damage. Go over to Chris Lambeth, who's sitting in P21. He's up two positions. Andrew Korsteki is up seven, just ahead of him. Behind is Chris Stewart. And with so many close battles, it's hard to decide who's good to look at. Ryan Bird. In the, uh, the Corvette is uh, doing pretty good. He's got uh, Chris Stewart in equal car ahead of him. He goes down the inside line and ooh, 
That is... Uh... Not on for that for that one, but uh Awesome McGill down five positions. Trying to make it work here. He's got Eric Koonsman behind him in the uh McLaren, just ahead is Chris Stewart. A few seconds. I think the battle is gonna be between these drivers right now. But we're going to go over to Nathan Graham, who has been quick in qualifying, quick in the race. He's got Cody uh, McGillian behind him, also a quick driver. He's lost only one place at the start of this race. Their last lap was exactly the same, a 124.947. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. They got Landon Lloyd and that Martini um, Huracan, uh, Lamborghini Huracan ahead in P4. They're losing a little bit of time here, uh, Landon Loy is, to the driver ahead of him. Going over to him, he's 2.3 seconds back. Going over to Jacob Simmons in his own race right now. Man comes back from a bachelor party. The uh, season 10 w driver champ is just sitting comfortably in P3 with a two second gap to the driver's in front and the drivers behind but that is not the case for these drivers here going back to rafael santos even back as far as uh mark foley who's also only eight tenths away from this fierce battle as you can see down the list there or down the line there is nathan graham making trying to make a move here a lot of drivers up until p12 are still in this and look at that. They're going to go side by side the next couple corners. And look, Cody McGillian might have a move down. Now as he tries to make something happen, J.D. Daniel looking to make a, 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 a try to poke into this fight. He's that Pax Oceani purple uh, in the uh, Corvette. Just behind him is Elliot Burton in Trap Punk Racing Gold. And Nathan Graham, really the one that's trying to put the screws to this driver ahead of him. Everyone else just looking for opportunities. No dives have been made down the inside line here out of these drivers. But it is getting close. And I think Mark Foley is finally starting to get closer to this. Ah, that's... That's Christopher Stewart, I believe. Who was off on the infield there. On the grass. Ah, and Cody, uh, Cody Alien... Uh, I'm not even sure what that was. We'll pull back here. Ten seconds. I'll try it again. Um, ooh. So, he slots in, but then just goes wide. Has to let some drivers by. Maybe he had a slowdown penalty. But, yeah, he definitely did not let them go naturally. He would have fought harder than that. He's been quick. Down four to P9 for him. And there goes Trey Mistak on Eric Rodriguez. Eric Rodriguez in that uh, that Porsche. Blue and green. As it looks like he's going to try to battle him back into turn one. I don't think it's over for Trey Mistak. Maybe it is. But I'm seeing them side by side. And they go for it. And Eric Rodriguez not giving an not done battling him, I should say. Trey Mistak and now has to go on the outside line and hold it and try to take this in the next couple corners. I think Trey Mistak has it done. Yes, he does. He goes through. And the Season 9 driver champion of Trey Mistak now in P35. Go further back, Michael Nash makes a move down the inside line. And that's three wide there. No Hodgkinson is also involved in that. But Blake Patterson, uh, Jeff Lubich in P44, that white Porsche, gets ahead. Michael Nash down nine pos uh, positions. So, more of a recovery race from when he started this. 
So he's got to contend with those other drivers just ahead of him. Going over to Chris Lambeth, who has might have the move down on Andrew Korostecki. That's Chris Stewart up six positions. It looked like he was the driver that spun, but he's also not doing bad in position. There's, I think, the, the move done for Chris Lambeth. Maybe. I don't think he... It's quite not there yet. Whoa! And Andrew Korostecki! Unsettled on the rear there, for sure, when going over that curbing. Going straight and not turning into that corner is, I think, the only thing he was going to be able to do to save that. Unfortunate for him. We'll see if he can't recover that. Back over, we have Christopher Daniel in uh, the Pax Oceani uh, Racing Nomads. Behind him is Cody Elion, who's uh, McGillian, who's down four positions at the start of this race. Elliot Burton, the, uh, I would say, like, the, the most calculated driver. It's always just calm, collected. These mistakes reel in his positions. He's up to... And when you're in in the fight in the top 10, some of these are just down to mistakes only because all these drivers are really, uh, really showing some great racecraft. Not only in the top 10, in the top everything. I haven't seen really any bad, anything intentional or weird happening here on, on track. A lot of, uh, a lot of respectful drivers. But nothing as close as what we were seeing. Garen Hahn, Garen Hahn of the Gucci. Oh, he makes the move on Tyler Kern. And he gets it to stick. And he goes ahead for now. You know, the Corvette versus uh, Mustang de debate. I was thinking it was going to go to the Mustang because the six hour BOP uh that was gonna go to all the cars didn't happen so that boost to the uh the fourth mustang is still there and the corvette just beat him out right here these drivers are still really relatively close but nothing's changed going back to p12 of mark foley it's got now Erica Neville involved with Pax Oceani. He is a Origami Pirates. And behind him, he's got Jordan Groves. Ooh! Ooh! And yikes! Jordan Groves goes through. That's one of his sister teammates. But if we go back to that, just a snap and another snap. What a save. Honestly, what a save. An impressive bout. He still didn't lose that much time. He's got 1.2 to his te uh, sister teammate there that he's got to make back up. But what I was going to say, Landon Loy looks to have gotten rid of P5 for the moment of Nathan Graham. JD Daniel here in the Pax Oceani uh, backpack team of Matthew Baldwin as his teammate. They are now the new the new pack that is just still together you got nathan graham jd daniel going over to it you can see rafael santos in that pink uh porsche and that is p5 to p11 mark foley is just behind in p12 even jordan groves is getting into this as he's that pax oceani uh driver there and um, even further back, I kind of want to see who was that. That's Cooper McCoy, who joined back in on P52. He had a 1 minute and 14 second pit stop. That's unfortunate. He must have had uh, some, some damage of some sort. Um, moving back over. Go over to Demarcus uh, Rogers. And Eric Koonsman just ahead. Demarcus Rogers in this purple uh, McLaren facing Eric Koonsman's purple McLaren. 
It looks like he's going to try to have him move down the inside line, and it's almost there. Trevor Bonesteel in that Porsche, just behind. These drivers on similar pace, lap after lap here. No change in the orders. We have Chris Stewart and Chris Lambeth. The Battle of the Chrises happening here in P17 and 18 as Chris Stewart gets by Chris Lambeth. And I think the move is kind of stuck. And look at that. That gap from Chris Stewart. Five seconds to Jeff Kaufhold. Trey Mistak up 24 positions at the start of this race. Craig Carroll is in the pit lane. He's going to serve his mandatory pit stop now. I think we might see start to see the shuffle in the order. There's uh, Austin McGill having a move here at Chris Lambeth. Hey, thank you, uh, CTH777, for the follow. And Br uh, Brobson, too, who uh, didn't... We didn't get a notification on that one. Austin McGill overtakes Chris Lambeth on the outside line there in the uh, at turn. What a move for him. On but looking back, he he qualified P18 and he's back in P18. Chris Stewart has up nine positions. Further back, you have John Javecki, Rodrigo Theory, Andrew Korstecki, all up in positive motions here. Demarcus Rogers finally has the move down here on Eric Koonsman, and it looks like it's going to stick. And look at Trevor Bonesteel is also getting into this battle as he's now going to make a move here on Eric Koonsman. You know, it, it rain, You know, sometimes it rains and pours at the same time. You lose one, you might lose two. But Trevor Bonesteel, I don't think he had the move down just yet, but maybe he's going to try to make something happen on a turn one. There goes Demarcus Rogers, now well ahead with a sixth-tenth gap down the straight and look at that he does go for the move and whoa holy sense of sense he keeps it together and keeps it on track and doesn't collide with demarcus rogers or air coonsman and what a move it was almost done well i mean it almost it could have happened that could have been just the slide in take the position and i'll have it but i think he had too much rotation in that those tires because he had to slow it slow it down and then try to regain and i think they just had a little bit more control on exit and he's got the move down though look at him go that is p24 off uh air coonsman there and what a fantastic move up eight positions at the start of this race that's mighty impressive. Did not kill his rivals with a uh, very uh, dramatic move into turn one. Collects himself, passes him at a later point, and what, what a, what a fantastic, uh, what a fantastic move. Honestly, both of them. The response. Eric Koonsman not out of the fight just yet. He's going to stay there on his rear. They're doing similar lap times. Last lap was a 4 tenth difference. Um, maybe we'll see the gap start to wane slightly. We know that the Porsche does well in cornering. And um, haven't heard much from everyone talking about the McLaren. Uh, it's definitely got its own unique features here at this race I'm breaking I believe further back we have drivers finally coming out of the pit lane so the shakeup is happening it's not happening out of our race leaders here Peter Flanner leads John Carlo Minetti Schliemann by half a second and they are still out drivers at pit we have Justin Scott in P42. He's the highest driver on the grid out of all positions that has actually gone in the pit lane. Oh. 
And I suspect we will see Chris Len uh, Trey Mistak picking up a couple more spots into P31. He's going to lose some of these. He has not pit. He's not gone in the pit lane while several other drivers have. Um, see something happening there. I think that every driver ahead right now of Mark Foley, as well as Jordan Groves even, I don't think these drivers are going to do anything special with their pit stops. I think they're going to follow each other into the pit lane and not make this more dramatic. Try to go for an undercut, find themselves into traffic. And as they say that, Giancarlo Mede Schliemann's in the pit lane and Peter Flanner is... Er, Giancarlo Mede Schliemann stays out and Peter Flanner goes into the pit lane. And while I said that, a lot of these drivers in the top 10 opted to stay out. Jacob Simmons, Landon Loy. Jacob Simmons was in P3. So we'll see what happens. I suspected that they would all kind of follow suit. Ooh, look at that snap. And that is Elliot Burton losing two positions. And it can be that quick. It's unfortunate for this driver. who was running fairly well. Still is running fairly well. But he's, now he's got Chris Chitterling down the straight. And we know the, the Ford Mustang is relatively strong right now because it did not hit the BOP for the six out, uh, same difference. He's going to have the better line on that one, but they're going to go side by side through a couple more. And I think he's got it down. And there goes Chris Schirling. And there he doesn't go because there's Elliot Burton. He's... He's found himself better off on this, and he stays ahead. There's Mark Foley trying to make a move there on Rafael Santos. In the, ooh, and he's going to go into the pit lane. Maybe he doesn't like what's going on there. John Carlos stays out. Nathan Graham stays out. J.D. Daniel stays out. Christopher Daniel stays out. Uh, Cody Ilion stays out. Chris Chitterling's out. Foley's out. Jordan Groves is still out. Eric Neville's out. Elliot Burton is staying in the pit lane. Now he's got a whole lot of drivers. There's Jacob Simmons. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. Peter Flanner had a 106 pit stop, and Jacob Simmons had a 57.2. Landon Loy had a 57.3. Both drivers were behind Peter Flanner in six seconds. It's actually more than six seconds. He comes tumbling down the order. And look at Jacob Simmons. He's now down to P22. We have Kyle Howe, who's still not gone in the pits. Where's Giancarlo? He's out there in the position to not go in the pits still. What is this guy doing? I am kind of wondering how is that going to phase out for the driver you know there goes nathan there goes jd there goes christopher cody Ilion stays out chris chitterling stays out rafael santos is staying out jordan grove stays out eric neville is still out there i am shocked by this Austin mcgill staying out rodrigo theory goes in trevor bone steel what can he do he's got trey mistack four seconds back he goes in the pit lane so now where does this put our p1 drivers jacob simmons running almost no practice not nursing a hangover by any means but had a little bit he is provisionally p1 because we have not seen the leaders pit and he's up to 20 up to 18 it's changing rapidly. He's now into P16. He's got Landon Loy behind him. Peter Flanner, who had some issue in the pit lane because he lost a whole lot of time to drivers that were in P3 and P4. Giancarlo was the one driver he was battling on track, and he has finally gone in the pit lane. 
I think everyone, I mean, everyone took tires for sure. And fuel, but I'm not sure what's happening. Chris Chitterling stays out. I'm, now we're seeing these drivers are all slotting in together and they're going to go into the pit lane. It's the staying out thing. Now we have drivers to P12. These drivers are on 21 a stint and they're going to go 21 laps, even 22. Garen Hahn, he's still got some time to go, but he is the last driver. Well, there's a couple drivers that are further back that have not gone in the pits. Michael Nash, Steve McAllister, Eddie A. Smith's pit very early. Jeff Lu uh, Lubitsch hasn't gone in. It's anyone's game here. And as I say that, we have Landon Loy and Jacob Simmons battling for what is should be P1, possibly P1. John Carlo Manetti Schleeman is actually in the lead down into turn one. He is already there. And these drivers are behind him. And that is what I say he was doing. He is winning this race off an amazing pitch strategy. And I was completely wrong. As now he's got P2, 3, and 4 all behind him. And look how close they are. And ah, it's unsettling. It's, Jacob Simmons is now having to contend with Peter Flanner. Down in a couple of corners, unsettling the uh, the car there, over the, getting over the curbing. Landon Loy is holding on to that position for now. As they bang doors on that corner. Chris Chitterling now into the pit lane. Eric Neville, uh, Neville in the pit lane. Where is Giancarlo Manet Schliemann? He is going to get well ahead of these drivers. These drivers uh, were in the top 10, I believe, but weren't... Uh, in close contention for like a pit stop strategy uh, change. Giancarlo Manetti Schliemann has to go into the pit lane again. What is happening? He just won. And oh no, it is going to be unraveled. Giancarlo was sitting in P2, now P1, but was holding P1. And down the start straight finish, we see him in the pit lane. Landon Lloyd takes P1 with 22, uh, 10 laps to go. What the heck is that? Jacob Simmons inherits P2. Peter Flanner goes brave down into turn one and takes it away from Peter Fl uh, from Jacob Simmons. Now JD Daniel might have a, uh, something to ha say about this. He's, he might have a, r a run. The pitch strategy has really shaken up this order. Chris Chitterling now in the battle with Cody uh, McIllian for P7, Nathan Graham down into P6, JD Daniel only two tenths away from Jacob Simmons. And that has got to be frustrating as Giancarlo Manetti Schliemann comes back out onto track. He sees Charles Whedon right there and behind him, and he's going to actually end up ahead of Alex uh, Warkus uh, gets ahead of him in that uh, that yellow uh, Mustang there and a 1 minute point zero two pit an unfortunate endeavor for this driver who was looking extremely strong I don't even know what happened drive through penalty, stop and go, something. Here's J.D. Daniel trying to make the move. Jacob Simmons is defensive down into turn one. Is he going to be late on the brakes? They're going side by side. And this is close racing. And a little bit more of a gap here from the other driver of uh, Landon Loy he faced. And, but they're still... Peter Flannery, he went side by side with him through that corner as well. And look at that, Christopher Daniel. Now we'll give him a little bump. What is this all about? Does he have the move down? I don't think JD has it at this moment, but look at that. Christopher Daniel is going to overtake JD Daniel and possibly Jacob Simmons. Another angle here. He's, he's fighting and putting it down. That Mercedes looking strong and he gets ahead 
And I'm not sure if he's staying ahead, but Jacob Simmons is well into the battle with the Pax Oceani racing nomads and backpack team. Shady Daniel being a part of the backpack team. I'm uh, not even sure what that means. It's just Pax Oceani backpack. An unfortunate two loss, two position, or one position loss for each driver. JD Daniel, Jacob Simmons, up four for Christopher Daniel now. And I'm sure JD Daniel, who thought he had the move down, is just looking at that rear bumper of Venus and thinking, man, I, I gotta get by this. It's a haunting look at a rear bumper. And that would be Christopher Daniel clashing Steve McAllister there of Caffeine Global Motorsports. And he gets by, gets a lot of them by. Uh, and it's just difficult. You got a lot of drivers trying to make the move. It's hard to even let anyone pass uh, in corners like that. It's bound to happen where you're just like, you gave your best. There's only so much you can do in those scenarios. So we have uh, Kyle Howe, Cooper McCoy, and Michael... That's not Michael Nash. No, it's not. Um, it's Cooper McCoy. Kyle Howe's ahead of him, three tenths, and then he's got Michael Oceans. Oceans, I should say. Just ahead. His second or third season with us, I can't remember. And there's Mark Foley down, thirty-four positions. Mark Foley was running P12. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, a 1 minute 46 second pit stop. That's what happened. Dylan Maroney of the um, Draft Punk Racing Silver looking to hold his position here for P26. John Carlo Minetti Schliemann might have him though. Pace difference there is a uh, gets it down into turn one. Not even two tenths difference on the last. Uh, sorry, no, eight tenths difference on the last lap. Giancarlo Manetti Schliemann and Dylan Maroney on a uh, race pace there. So inevitability, especially with a driver who was sitting in P two, he's just gonna plow his way through the tr uh, the field. It's not going to be enough with this many laps remaining. It's more of a recovery race at this point. How many can you get back, claw back, before the end of this race? You have Trey Misak, who's up 30 positions from the start of this race in P23. Trevor Bonesteel just ahead of him in P22. And then you got a whole gaggle of cars. All these drivers are racing for a position. With the exception... Actually, no, even them. P48 and P49 of Eric Koonsman and Joseph Kenny are also racing uh, for a position. Demarcus Rogers is going down the inside line here. He's got Chris Stewart. And Eric Koonsman is the driver on the f far right there. And Demarcus Rogers just lets go down the straight. And Chris Stewart just kind of went by him. I'm not sure what happened there. And now he's got to worry about Trevor Bonesteel here. And just briefly, it looked like something was happening uh, out of that, that battle. The battle at all. Now I'm just a bit confused. Demarcus Rogers has been running a very fine race so far. Um, but he did lift off maybe he had a, a little penalty as someone's parked off the side there in the, on the grass it looks like Air Koonsman has let them, some of these drivers by but he's actually kind of racing these drivers and not really letting up 
and there's Joseph Kennedy also trying to like find his way. He's that BMW there. He's trying to just looks like let him go, but I mean these two are racing for position 48, uh, 47, 48. And uh, thank you, uh, MT. Um, uh, what's that? MNT Motorsports. Thanks for the follow. And there he goes. He lets by that driver and then Trey Mistak is I guess the only one that's losing out on this this battle and someone went off in the grass and, and he lets up there but I mean the decision is already done he's got Trevor Bonesio who's making out on this perfectly Demarcus is also out there like gaining spots off of that uh, the back markers there and then Giancarlo Minetti Schliemann also gaining the spot to P25 uh, further up we have Eric ne uh, Neville on Elliot Burton for P11 Bang door is just a little bit, but I think the move is done. And Eric goes through. That's the uh, Pax Oceani Origami Pirates driver. His teammate of Alex Often, who's not here. Peter Flanner has now caught up to Landon Loy. He's three tenths separated. And it's still well within his. Power to get back this uh, this this win, this Jacob Simmons, who looked to be uh, in a really great uh, bout with the uh, the pit stop strategy. Unfortunate whatever happened to Giancarlo there, but was in front of Landon Loy, now behind. Uh, could have been a, just a remarkable. Coming back with no practice really in it and taking first place with four laps to go. I don't know if that's going to be the case. But that would have been a, uh, a great season opener for the uh, Season 10 Driver Champion in the Pro Class. But that win, that could have been John Carlos even, who looked to have put off the perfect pit stop strategy that I was questioning up and down for a, a good 20 seconds. And we have Austin McGill in P14, Brandon Renfro in 13. Uh, the McLaren versus Porsche. Porsche is ahead in that Jack Daniels livery. And at a track where people were saying it wasn't going to be great for passing. We've seen a lot of great passes. Really impressive. And there's Jeff Koffold in the Ferrari with that Valhalla uh, racing livery. Uh, behind is uh, Blake Nave and Mark Foley, P52 and 44. It's blue. He's only in battle with Rodrigo Theory, who's up one, ooh, even further. Three laps to go. He is even closer. Landon Loy leading by only two tenths. Uh, that gap is going to three, four. But um, on the straight, Peter was reeling into almost 1.5 seconds away from Landon Loy before they got to turn one. And I'm sure Peter Flanner's going to want to try to make a move before this race ends with three laps to go. And further back, we have... Uh, we have three drivers, four, five, five drivers that have... Um, are in the pit box. 
kind of out of this race entirely. It's fortunate. Now we go on board. And this is the first time I've actually gone on board in the uh, McLaren. Looks pretty interesting. Not sure what the barcode's for. Somebody scan it. Let's see what it's all about. He's six tenths back with six lap, uh, two laps to go. He's not quite alongside him as he was once in the last lap. And we'll peer more over to JD Daniel, who might have something in store for Jacob Simmons. With two laps to go, is he going to try to take P4 from him? Actually, it's going to probably go down to Cody McGillian, who's got Nathan Graham, that uh, McLaren red and black in front of him. Closest driver on grid to another driver, with exception to Pierre Flanner, who might finally have it. He's three tenths separated. He was five tenths separated on the last lap. Now it's six. Maybe he's just setting himself up here. It's half a second off before they get into the final corner. On the Star Trek finish, it's half a second. Is he going to be able to reel that back in with the, the toe in mind? I don't think so. He gets to four tenths, three tenths almost. Still not enough. He's not. Even, he just got to three tenths before the braking zone. It's the final lap. And the same thing can be said with J.D. Daniel and Jacob Simmons and P4 and 5 here. J.D. Dan in the Pax Oceani purple livery there. And we'll have to go further up as the battle for the lead is still underway. They are both separated by the same distance here. P4 and 5 and 1 and 2 really battling out. Christopher Daniel is in his own race there for P3. He is not worried. You can see him in that Mercedes. Can Peter Flanner respond on the final lap, or is this going to be it for him? And in the background, it looks like Jacob Simmons and J.D. Daniel were battling. And then J.D. Daniel's ahead at the moment. And I don't think it's going to go that way, but here we go. Down the start straight finish. Landon Loy is going to win. Here at Indianapolis with Peter Flanner in P2, Christopher Daniel is going to hit P3. J.D. Daniel sticks it ahead of Christopher Dan uh, Jacob Simmons for P5. Nathan Graham in 6, Cody McGillian in 7, uh, Chris Schirling in 8, Rafael Santos in 9, Jordan Groves in 10, Eric uh, Neville in 11, Elliot Burton in 12, Brandon Renfro still holding out there. He's got a couple corner or last corner. He's in for 13. Austin McGill in 14. Rodrigo Theory in 15. Jeff Coffold in 16. Tyler Anderson is st still got a battle on our hands. Tyler Anderson's leading that one. He's in 17. Andrew Corsi in 18. Chris Lambeth in 19. Chris Stewart in 20. Uh, Demarcus Rogers 21. Trevor Bonesio in 22. John Carlin Manetti Schumann finishes a P23. John Javecki 24. Trey Mistak 25. Um, Justin Scott in 26. Dylan Maroney, 27. Craig Carroll in 28. Alex, uh, Alex Warkers in 29. Carl Reed in 30. Eric Rodriguez, 31. Garen Hahn in 32. Uh, Noah Hodgkins in 33. Tyler Kurt in 34. Michael Oceans in 35. Kyle Howe crosses the line in 36. Michael Kostek in 37. Michael Nash in 38. Kevin Eddie, Eddie A. Smith in 39. Blake Patterson still hasn't crossed the line yet. He's going to finish in 30, 40. Terry Burks in 41, Dakota Monez in 42, Jeff Lub Lubich is in still out there. Actually, he's still out there, but he finished in 43, Mark Foley in 44, and Steve McAllister in 45, Joseph uh, Kennedy in 46, Eric Kuzman in 47. Thank you for the follow there, Grambo 5. Um, 
Blake Robinson, Robson in 48, Kirk Mossy 49, Blake Nave in 50, Gareth Hammond 51, Cooper McCoy 52, Ken Pullen 53, Joshua Brasso 54, Ryan Bird 55, Nicholas DeVille in 46, 56, and Thomas Matcham in 57. I'll put the results there on the page as we'll scroll over to uh, the drivers you can't see just yet. And hopefully we have uh, some people that want to talk to me about their the race maybe not but as we go through that lineup you can see the drivers there and i'll even put the uh horizontal ticker so you can see a little bit more um that was round one here at any uh indianapolis indy uh road course and what a first round And I'm trying to think, uh, out of all those drivers, we have actually Peter Flanner uh, sitting in P2. We'll get him in. Peter, uh, first of all, congratulations on the P2. Uh, what a fantastic finish for you. Uh, you had a great run uh, leading this race. Uh, it looked like John Carlo Manet Schliemann kind of overtook you in the, with a pit stop strategy, but then ultimately his kind of unfolded on itself. Um did you have anything to deploy against Landon Loy towards the end there? Uh, this track is just so hard to pass at. Uh, I had the pace to stay behind him. Uh, I was just trying to get him to make a mistake, and it didn't happen. So not P2 as good as I could do today. Uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate because you... You had um you had a, 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 a I guess a, a mistake in in the pit stop. What was that mistake? Because you know your your pit was you know um a full minute and uh, six seconds. So everyone else had fifty seven threes, fifty seven uh, fifty eights even. But what was that all about? Yeah, it was kind of a comedy of errors. I saw a uh, a car that was a lap down ahead of me, and I wanted to pull into the pits so that I wouldn't get slowed down by them. But they pulled into the pits at the same time. And that slowed me down a little bit, and then I accidentally had four tires checked. So, oh, so you went for the full beans on the uh, tires. So, where is everyone else going for halves? I think it helped me in the second half, but I didn't intend to do that. Gotcha. That's that's truly unfortunate. Um, I mean, great, uh, great outing though. You know, I think you started on pole. Um, if I remember correctly. But yeah, uh, I, and John Carlo was right behind me. He, the he whole first half of the race. He he gave you a little bit of a bout there, and um, I thought it was going to be more of a scrap between the two of you. What ended up, yeah, that comedy of errors really is what kind of brought the fight in for Landon Loy as well as you know Jacob Simmons. I'm not sure what happened with Jacob Simmons, but he started to lose pace on that second stint uh, significantly. I would say because he got passed twice. And, it, you know, it almost seemed like he was going to win that race at one point because he was ahead of Land, uh, Landon Lloyd. Yeah, well, if Jacob's coming in here, I'll let he'll, him tell that story. But, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't on his A game tonight. I mean, hey, he just got back from a bachelor party. We can cut him some slack. Uh, Peter Flanner, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, what a fantastic result. I mean, ultimately, you showed some really impressive racecraft out there on the track, and it was nice to see. Yeah, thank you, Jason. Yep. And Christopher Daniel of the uh, Pax Oceani Racing Nomads. Um, first off, uh, great. You brought three uh, teams back again. I'm not sure what the backpack team's all about or the Origami Pirates, but interesting naming of those but congratulations the p3 finish uh i saw that move you had down on your sister teammate as well as jacob simmons in the i would say you know almost a, uh almost sector three it was like sector two sector three like during the s's i mean what a wind up you're able to make it, that move stick and uh, first it was on the outside then it was on the inside i mean was that the best part of the race for you yeah, it was pretty fun out there. Uh, I hope uh, I hope we get to watch it back on the on the big screen, so to speak, on your on your uh, stream. But yeah, that was a lot of fun racing with JD and and Jacob and, and even some of the new guys out there. I think it was Nathan and and Cody. Um, 
man, those guys were fast and it was just fun to be out there um, racing really hard, but racing really clean. And um, that's what this league's all about. And that's what I appreciate about it. Yeah. I mean, fantastic race. Uh, is there something that caught JD Dan out there when you were, uh, did he say anything in particular? Because I mean, it looked like he had the move down on Jacob Simmons and then you pretty much just swept them both and, yeah, it looked like Jacob Simmons was struggling a little bit there, um, but, you know, you just kept it calm, cool, collected on your own sister teammate as well as Jacob there. Uh, it's fantastic to see. But my, going back to my question, what was the talk with uh, JD like? Uh, he was he was very complimentary of the move. Um, I hate that I abandoned him, but uh, where we were headed was basically to, uh, you know, an off track, you know, to where it was lighter colored, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to be down there because the, the brakes on the Mercedes, I'm still getting used to. They're very hard to, uh, to activate or to use without activating ABS. Um, so when we... When we came out of that uh, that chicane before the long back stretch, uh, I saw him wiggle and he said, give me a bump. So I did. And then I saw Jacob move to the left to kind of pinch him. And I had a pretty good run. Um, so I figured if we both put pressure on him, um, maybe one of us would survive, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, we, we kept it really clean. And that's, you know, what it's all about. It was a good hard racing. That's actually fantastic you said that because I did notice the bump and I was like, oh, it looks like he's trying to give him the old... Uh... That move, I didn't say anything on streams to that effect, but I was thinking it in my brain there. I was like, oh, look at him. He's trying to give him a little boost, and it looked like he had it, but, I mean, Jacob was really defending that inside line hard, and it just gave you the opening. I mean, what a fantastic result on the end. You did get a finish on the, you know, on the steps, as uh, Giancarlo had an in, uh, his own issues to, to contend with, having to go in the pits twice. But ultimate result for your, your teams, uh, all three of them doing pretty well. Thank you for joining me, Chris. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having a stream for us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yep, see you next week. All right, bud. And Rodrigo Theory, the uh, AM class winner. Uh, that's got to feel good. Were you in any contention with any drivers around you that you know of that were in the AM class? I was for a little bit, Jason, and then I kind of just... Um, everybody started pitting at different times, different windows, different strategies, and I just... I lost anyone who was close in the AM class, I think. Um, the only person that was uh, usually always my shadow was John uh, Javicki. And, man, always always racing with that guy. It's always fun. Uh, I was pretty much the biggest competition that I could see. Uh, quite a lot of spun cars, but it was a tough track. Yeah, I mean, even Andrew Korostecki, uh I mean, you finish in the middle of the pro drivers, uh, P15, with drivers all around you that are you know i would assume that the closest one maybe trevor bone steel and p21 is the am driver closest to you but that's a far difference in where he's uh, ended this race um that's how i gotta feel kind of reassuring to some degree you're just sitting in the middle of the uh pro drivers they might actually have to bump you up at some point didn't you, you gotta win this am class and just get promoted right or is it are they go by the um by the the stats thing yeah i think it's just the the ranking i'm still silver so I, and i'm i'm just at the very top of it and i just need to gain some good points stay incident free and i should have a promotion pretty well soon enough so i'm, I'm hoping for that soon so somebody can get a better chance in the am class because it feels a little unfair but i mean i'm having fun racing regardless yeah well i mean at some point, you are racing with the racecraft of the drivers that are you're, you're around. So, I mean, you're doing well. You're battling well. Uh, you just did, you know, I think you finished with 10, 10 positions gained off of uh, off of everybody there. I'm, I'm not sure if I recall. Uh, yeah, the 14. 14. Yeah, 14 yes. gained. So, I mean, incidents happened. Uh, stuff happened, but you were able to just keep it with the, the actual racecraft to just keep it on track and keep it going and fantastic result. Uh, is there anything you had to um, mention? Um, just happy to join uh, Draft Punk Racing. That's my biggest mention. Great group of guys and learning a lot from them and they're being real patient with, with me. So I'm happy to be with them and uh, happy to move up. Yeah, I mean, they, they some, they're probably imparting some wisdom onto you because it's showing in your skills 
from the last couple of seasons that I've seen you race. Uh, congratulations on the AM class win. Uh, hopefully you just keep getting great results so you can win this AM class title and automatically get promoted into the uh, pro class league there. Yeah, I hope so, Jason. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. All righty. All right, everybody, if you're still with me, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, this is the GT3 uh, Sprint Championship Season 11, Round 1, here for the Broken Wing Racing League. Uh, you can catch us with the Xfinity Series, the the, the Vs, and the Rays, uh, the Super Formulas. Those are not streamed, but we're looking into that, and... Just join the league. Uh, join some of this fun. You can see a lot of great racecraft, a lot of great drivers. Um, appreciate everybody that was watching, and uh, have a good night.